But really, so what? I mean, who really needs to integrate two forms? Well, there are lots of reasons for wanting to do this over surfaces. Perhaps the best example comes from computing flux associated to vector fields. Two-form fields can be thought of as flux forms for some vector field in 3D. Remember how this works. If you have a 3D vector field, F, that is of the form Fxi plus Fyj plus Fzk, then the associated flux two-form, phi sub F, is given by Fx dy wedge dz plus Fy dz wedge dx plus Fz dx wedge dy. Now notice the nice symmetry, the cyclic ordering here. This makes it really easy to remember the relationship between a vector field and its dual flux two-form. Now, what is this good for? Well, at the infinitesimal level, this flux two-form tells you something about how much stuff the vector field is pushing through an infinitesimal bit of oriented area. But when you integrate this, you get net flux. That is, how much stuff flows across an oriented surface. Let's say you've got some oriented surface S in 3D. Then the flux of a vector field F across S can be written in terms of vector calculus as the surface integral over S of F dotted with N, where N is that, that field of unit normals, those vectors that are of unit length and orthogonal to S in a way that is defining the orientation. Then you integrate this with respect to the surface area element. Now, if you want to write this in terms of forms, it's so much nicer. You're simply integrating the flux to form of F over S. That's a great reason for wanting to do this, and there are lots of physical settings in which you really do want to compute the flux of a field across a surface. For example, let's say um, you're looking at a fluid flow that has a velocity field. Then fluid flux is how much stuff is flowing past a surface, like an open window, for example. Or in the case of a magnetic field, you might care about the magnetic flux. The flux of that field across some surface, that's useful in physics for computing things like magnetic force, other stuff like that. There are other physical examples where we care about the flux of a vector field, but it takes a little time to get used to thinking about surfaces and vector fields and flux thereof. There's a lot of stuff going on. If you think about an oriented surface and stuff flowing past it according to a vector field, then at the infinitesimal level, if you zoom in, what you really care about is the dot product between that vector field evaluated at a point on the surface and the unit normal vector field there. You got to keep track of orientations. If the vector field is flowing in the same direction as the orientation of the surface, that's positive flux. Otherwise, it's negative. If you can think about this at the infinitesimal level and then use what we know about integration to add up these local fluxes across every point of the surface, then you get net flux. It's hard to see, but it's easy to compute because you know how to integrate two forms.